Making your own trees isn't easy, so how do you go from this to this to this? I'll show you how. Welcome back to Chadwick Model Railway. I'm Charlie. Last Sunday I popped up to Worley and I'd just like to say thank you for all the folks that came over and said hello. I do appreciate you kind of touching base and having a quick chat. Anyway, at Worley, I go there for kind of for a couple of reasons, obviously to find out what the new manufacturers are turning out, but also I go there obviously for the layouts because they are good quality layouts and what I seek really, like most other people who go there, is inspiration. And I couldn't help but notice this year that lots of manufacturers were turning out decent trees. And then when I looked at the layouts, they kind of fell into two camps. There were the ones that had next to no trees or very small trees and those that had exceptional trees. So I thought to myself, well, you know, what, do I, what have I got on my layout and the layouts I've built before? And to be perfectly honest, they haven't been that good. So I went along and I spoke to a guy called Anthony from Tremendous and he showed me one of the armatures that he makes. Now he makes these things out of um, uh, florist's wire and he sells them, well, well he sold them at the, on the day up there for about £20. Now I've measured this and in double O scale this is a 70 foot tree which might seem to you to be quite large. But down the road from me is a lovely oak tree and over the last 18 months I've been trying to film a sequence and as you can see from going from summer into winter you then can see the full structure um, of the of the branch layout and then um, the beast from the east came and as you can see there you know it's all there and, and to be revealed as it were in open countryside trees seem to grow just about the whole length of the railway and as farmers don't uh, don't get paid to sort of to, to nurture these trees or look after them they just kind of grow away and eventually they'll get to a, a, a state where British Rail or Network Rail or whatever would turn around and trim them because they might become a hazard to the actual railway. On cuttings and embankments um, it's a little bit different in a cutting you'll tend to find that there are very few trees um, probably because they present a hazard of falling down the cutting onto the track embankments of course are the other uh, other side of the coin and on embankments they seem to grow freely up to sort of almost monstrous heights um, and then on the on the flat the open countryside then um, we we'll, as we all see them they're, they're almost every they're the whole length of the track um, until you get into sort of the more urban areas so what are we going to do in this video well i want to make a tree from scratch with wire we'll sort the uh, the, the the trunk out and the branches and the and the, the leaf structure itself and hopefully we'll finish up in half an hour with a totally finished tree um, which might inspire you to um, build a couple for your own layout so let's see how we get on so using the uh, the tremendous armature as an example I've counted how many strands there are and there are actually 52 so what I thought I would do is um, cut off 26 strands and then just double the ends over so there'll be a loop at this end so what am I going to use? Now I bought, went to um, uh, Dobby's the other day and uh, I bought this cheap and cheerful wire and using a micrometer it's simply half, uh, half millimetre wire. It seems to about the same kind of strength as the tree armature so this is good to go but it's just not covered in green plastic um, which is neither here nor there. And the price of this from Oasis at Dobby's was £3.99. I'm not too sure how long it is, but we'll, I'm sure we'll soon find out. So what I'm going to do now is cut it into um, 26... Let me think about that. No, right. So I want the tree. This tree here is about 12 inches high. And is that right? About right? Yeah, about 11 inches high. Well, I want mine to be at about 9 inches high. So I'm going to scale it down slightly. So to be 9 inches high, what I thought I would do is cut my lengths to be sort of 15 inches long. So what I'm going to do is cut them to be 30 inches long, i.e. twice as long, and then double them over into a loop. So um, I'll crack on with that. So there we have it. We now have uh, 26 strands, um, all about 30 inches long for the basis of the tree. So if I divide them, if, if I kind of just fold them in half, 
and then the bottom bit will be the, the root structure and then we start to twist to build up the trunk. All seems straightforward and of course now the decision making comes of where you want your first branches to come off. So we're kind of, um, what do we say, four millimetres to the foot, so what's that now? We're kind of, let me have a little look, don't do difficult maths in public Charlie. So it's five centimetres, 50 millimetres, which works out at about 12 feet. So that kind of seems a good enough place to start. Um, no, in fact, I'll wind it back a little bit more. I think we'll go back a, a touche. Um, and now we need to start dividing it up into branches. So what I'll do is I'll separate half of these out, bring these in half, and then wind this one out and then send the rest up a little bit further and then split those in half and then send those up a little further and hopefully the tree will kind of take shape like so. Let's zoom you in a little bit so perhaps you can see a little bit more. So we're kind of there. That kind of makes sense, hopefully. Right, so we'll progress it up the, up the tree a little further. And what I say I was after a tree of around about nine inches in height, wasn't it? So it takes us up to about there, nine inches. So those will go out there a little bit further and then we'll split one of these off, send that off as another limb. And continue these. Then send that one off and then send these up. Not too bad, I don't actually need pliers at this stage, it seems, still seems quite malleable as it were. Just need to split these down. then just keep dividing the wires as you progress. It's more difficult the fewer wires there are it just seems a bit strange you'd expect it to get it uh, easier but uh, it seems more difficult so we'll bring that one off take those up Okay, that's kind of where we are now. What I'll do now is I'll get a pair of pliers and uh, split them up and, uh, and then see how it shapes out um, and then start to, once I've got it in place, we'll start to trim it back and see what it looks like. So that's that first branch structure in place. It seems okay. And obviously all I need to do now is, is trim it in, but I won't do any trimming until I've done the rest of these limbs. So I'll get back to you as soon as I finish the rest. Well, there we are, the kind of, it's in kind of, a, tree shape as it were, it's obviously far too big. There's the original one that um, from um, Tremendous and as you can see this one is uh, very much more spindly but this is the bit you can't undo because now it's a case of taking the snips to the tree and trimming off what you consider to be um, the excess uh, area. So 
Um, obviously what we will need to do now is clamp it right in um, and uh, we can always unthread some of these but we just need to sort of trim it in a little bit so it can't be that hard can it oh by the way I've used a G clamp on the bottom there hopefully you can see to to, to keep the, uh, the thing still so what I'm going to do now is hopefully just trim it in and we'll see how it kind of reshapes after 10 minutes of pruning we've got some kind of basic shape and measuring it again but this time in metric so we can do it properly in scale so we're kind of um, about uh, 22 um, 220 cent uh, 220 millimeters which actually works out at um, a 55 foot tree so we're kind of pretty good it's a it's a fair shape I hope you can see that so um, yeah and it's 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 kind of quite bouncy perhaps I should have gone for a, a slightly thicker wire to give it more rigidity um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some white tape up and down the the um, uh, the trunk as it were the, the large bits of trunk and then I'm going to get some um, latex rubber and paint um, paint it up to try and lose the effect of um, of the the wire um, and then give it a spray with good old Humbrol Grey, I think would be a good starting point. Um, and then we'll work on um, the base colour of the tree. On the Tremendous uh, website, it suggests that you use half a bag of their bark powder. So I'm going to mix that up into a little container. And it says to add a few drops of glue. So I shall use a cheap and cheerful PVA, mix it up into a paste, and then with a, a couple of old. Uh, paint brushes I'll start to dab it on the tree the website said just add a few drops at a time and get it into a paste but um, it takes um, it took a lot more PVA than I originally thought to get it into this kind of consistency if you can kind of see that and then it suggests that you start at the top and work your way down. So I've got a couple of old gash um, paint brushes. These are cheap, cheap and cheerful ones from, from uh, Ravel or Revel, whichever way you choose to say it. And then it's just a case of painting it on the armature, which will clearly take quite some time because of the size of the armature, I suppose. But uh, yeah, but it should mask the wire. Um, so the um, the twists in the wire that's what you're, you're aiming to do so it's not that kind of noticeable and it will give a um, allegedly give a kind of a tree barky effect so uh, I shall plod on with that and as soon as I finish this one I shall do the um, the other one provided by Anthony of uh, Tremendous and I'll do that one at the same time whilst I've got this stuff mixed up seems to go on quite easily and it has a very much a, a branchy kind of colour to it as well. After about 10 or 15 minutes of painting this stuff on, it actually looks quite reasonable. I'm uh, pretty much pleased with that. It is difficult to get it to hide all the wire twists completely. Um, but it's just a case of taking your time and persevering and hopefully you can see that that's kind of getting there. So now I'll get on and do the one from uh, I bought from Tremendous. A couple of hours have now gone by since I did the initial painting on both this one and the armature from um, Tremendous and you can now start to see that it's changed colour as it dries um, but also it reveals the, pe the sort of parts you've missed with the odd brush so look fortunately this um, this goo stuff really this um, bark mix hopefully it's a flexible mix hasn't gone off so I can then um, patch it up now with a second coat and then in the morning once this is dry I'll blow a coat of um, uh, Halford's grey primer over it and uh, and then I'll get back to you once I've completed that I'll see you tomorrow well it's now tomorrow if that makes sense and I've sprayed both of the armatures um, with grey primer. I gave them both um, a, a couple of coats kind of thing. Um, and you can still see some of the uh, twisted wire in places, but um, um, nothing of, of really any consequence. When I saw Anthony back at Tremendous, he did mention about using something called 
rubberized horsehair um, for fabricating the small branch structure within these armatures. I didn't actually buy this rubberized horsehair from Tremendous. I actually bought it from um, Squires at the Warley Show and it came in at a shocking £3.49p. So there's no great expense there. And I imagine when you tear this apart, there must be enough here for literally dozens of trees. Of course, using rubberized horsehair isn't uh, necessarily the best or by any means the only um, uh, medium to use over trees. I mean, you can use sea moss and all sorts of others, but the reason I'm going to use this on this armature is because that's what um, Tremendous recommended. So we'll have a little go. I've never done this before, so it's all part of the adventure. And I imagine you just tear it off and plonk it on the branches to make up some kind of um, um, what you call it, branch um, density, as it were. So it's a case of plonking it all on, fitting it in with the wires, and getting it to hold it still. And then where do we go from here? Well, I suppose once this is all on, what I intend to do then is to spray the whole thing um, again. But this time I'm going to go for a kind of a, a lightish brown colour to mimic the branch uh, structure. And no doubt I'll have the snips in to uh, trim it all back a bit to give it a more of a natural tree shape. Um, and then we'll look at um, putting on some kind of leaf structure. And this is all kind of a, a literally make it up as you go along kind of game at the moment. And of course I can move the branches where it seems to be a bit thin on the ground as it were, if that makes kind of sense. But you can see that it's kind of taking shape. I'll pull out that piece there, it looks a bit twiggy as it were. Then doing it a little bit, perhaps to camera might help here. So what I'm trying to do is get it into the structure. And the good thing about this, of course, if it doesn't look right, you can just pull it all apart and start again. And then once this is all in place and you're happy with it, um, I think my intention really is to spray it with a, um, a spray glue and then hopefully it will bond reasonably well. The, uh, the last bits of wire that I can see poking out of this armature um, they do seem quite long, but um, as I said, nothing that a, a pair of snips won't sort out. So I'll carry on with this and uh, get back to you when I'm finished. I've uh, got a structure in that I'm kind of pleased with, but of course I can always add to it if when we start to put the leaf structure on itself, um, it needs more um, body as it were. Um, I used a pair of scissors to trim it in and um, it's kind of getting there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to blow a coat of paint over it. I have some Rover Rattan Beige left over so I might just um, give it a quick spray with that and see what that looks like. Otherwise I'll go for something um, uh, kind of mid-brown and uh, just to give us a base coat. So I'll get back to you um, when I've done that. Well I sprayed both of the armatures with the uh, Halford's um, beige gloss and they looked pretty awful to be perfectly honest you live and learn so what I've done in the meantime now is I've gone over this tree uh, the the um, the bark of the tree with Humbrol's dark brown wash and that seems to have um, put a bit more kind of real life into the into the trunk it's quite difficult really when you go around looking at trees um, all the barks are different colours, some are brown, some are green, some are covered in ivy, some are grey. Um, so it's very much a, a personal choice really. And I've also toned this um, plastic horsehair down with, uh, with, a, uh, with a, a dash of flat black. So what I'm going to do with this now is I'm going to clear this desk out and then we'll go and put some glue on the top and then start adding some foliage.
What I'm going to use um, to stick the, uh, the leaves in place is some display mount from 3M that I just happen to have um, lying around. So I thought I'd try and use that up and see how we get on. And for a base coat, I thought I would go for um, Woodland Scenics Fine Turf Burnt Grass, which is product number T1344. Um, so I thought try that one and then I've got three um, different leaf products uh, from Tremendous but I thought I'm going to go for the lighter one because it would kind of stand out more on the, on the fine turf. So we'll crack on with that. So once I've given this a good shake up I'll start spraying. Oh needless to say I've got a container here um, to catch the, uh, the excess um, leaf stuff. So let's spray some on and see how we get on. It seems to take quite well. I don't use hairspray because I always seem to think that hairspray is for hair. Silly old me. It's very much a case of, um, like I say, slap it on and see how it looks, really. Um, I've never done it before, and I imagine if you're going to have a go at this, you've never done it before either. I mentioned to the folks at the Model Railway Club today um, about the size of these trees, um, whether they were underscaled or overscaled. Um, I think we're all in agreement that this one here, um, the trunk is too long. It will look per perfectly good as a front of um, layout tree on a double O or HO layout. It's just that you need to um, cut the trunk down because it just seems too high. And of course, trees at the front of your layout need to be taller than the trees at the back because it helps with perspective. And that's kind of where we are. Okay, so what do you think? I quite like it, I must confess, I think it looks fine. But I might be slightly biased, might not I really? After all, I just did it. So what I do now is I'm gonna to try to enhance a little bit of color and I shall put something lighter on the top, which is these leaves from Tremendous, and these are three pounds a bag. Um, sadly, they're not really labelled which one this is, um, but it is a light, lighter green. And thinking about it, if the sun hits the top of the tree, then I, I imagine it would kind of look lighter. So literally just going straight down on the top of this tree, I shall sprinkle some of these, and you can see the difference in tone straight away. The thing is not to go mad with these otherwise you'll blend it all in. Now less is often more so what I thought I would do now is stop and then take stock of this and, uh, and see how it looks and see if I'm satisfied with it. You can see the point of having the plastic container underneath. There's an absolute ton of uh, what I say it was fine turf burnt grass on the container, obviously which I can recycle. I've tried to keep the uh, the product away from the branches, and I can just go over those uh, later on and uh, and give those a brush down. So I think uh, I think we're winning. 
Well, I've had a good look at it, and to be perfectly honest, I think using the fine turf burnt grass was probably a mistake. It doesn't look leafy enough compared to the areas um, where I have um, used their leaf, uh, the leaf product. I don't know if you can actually make out. This area here looks much better than this area down here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to re-glue it again, and I'm going to uh, give it a, a thoroughly good going over with one of the other uh, tremendous leaf products. So I'm not going to use the the one I've just used, the one I opened, but I'm going to use the lighter of the other two. So we'll uh, give it another spray and see how we get on. Of course, health and safety is always an important aspect of this, and you shouldn't really be snorting in um, these glue fumes, so uh, just keep that in mind. Yes, now they're starting to look like leaves rather than just a green sort of blobbiness of it. Now oh, that's much better. Before you embark on this, if you're going to try a tree of this size, do make sure you've got enough of these products because the last thing you want to do is obviously run out halfway through. And of course, wherever they, uh, wherever it's glue, wherever there is glue, the leaves will stick. And of course. If there isn't glue, it'll just fall off. So it's not, it's just, uh, you're not going to waste that much. And then back on the top again, I'll just put some more of the, uh, the initial um, ones. I use the light coloured ones to give it a bit of contrast as if the sun is hitting the, the top of this tree. Clearly I've missed a piece over here. And that does look much better. And hopefully if I zoom in you can see the difference. I'm afraid time's beaten us today, um, so I shall um, produce uh, a video next week um, where I'll use a different product um, to simulate the branch structure. So instead of using the plastic horsehair, I'm going to use a different product and to create a different look for this tree here. Um, and a few lessons that I've learned from this one is the first thing is I use the plastic box to catch a plastic box lid to catch all the the um, the tree substitute that I put on, don't do that, not such a good idea. It got covered in glue and it was a hell of a job to get it off using white spirit to lift it all off, so that wasn't such a good idea. 3M display mount, this is not the stuff to use, this is far, far too sticky, it really is. Um, and uh, it sort of goes everywhere, so if you're going to use something like this, go outside first, then spray the, the tree and then come back in and do that, but don't use this. Um, sort of willy-nilly around the room because it goes everywhere, not such a good idea. And as I mentioned earlier, the blended turf wasn't such a good idea either. Um, it doesn't have a leafy look to it. It does, of course, if you're doing smaller trees that sit at the back of your layer, it's absolutely fine. Um, so that was that. And the, the stuff from Tremendous, I'm not going to say it's Tremendous, it is very good. I mean, the leaf structure now on, on this little example, it looks absolutely fine, though I am going to cut cut it down a couple of inches to make it more in scale. So that's where we are with that. 
Um, so yeah, next week it's going to be um, the other tree armature will finish that one. Um, and in the meantime, what I would like to mention is I have to pay for all these products. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a patron page and somewhere around here, there may well be a, a patron link if you can go to a patron site. The reason if you become a patron, then for a small monthly fee, it helps me to sustain the uh, the YouTube channel and, and that would sort of get me to produce better videos using better products. In the meantime, before next week, there should be a video here and here and also a button to subscribe. So until next week, thanks a lot, take care and bye-bye.